Welcome to One on One with Expert Flyer, where we bring you the inside scoop from travel industry experts and innovators. I'm your host, Lisa Kaslin, and today we're continuing our series on cultural travel with our guest and India travel expert, Louise Nicholson. Welcome, Louise. Thank you very much. Good to have you. So I know that you have a long list of wonderful credentials. You're a trained art historian, an author of 25 books, is it? And yeah. a long time expert on travel to India. So talk a little bit about some of the touring that you're doing and a little bit about uh, Probatis, the company that you do it with. So I first went to India for my honeymoon which is about as romantic as it gets. It is the most fantastic place for a honeymoon oh. because everything can be fa as fairy tale as you want it to be. And as I've been helping people go to India for now 35 years, I have set up every different kind of honeymoon from the lux luxurious to a fantastic one that was a real challenge. The couple had six weeks off and they had $4,000 all in. Wow. And we did an incredible trip for them through South India uh, with lots of magic moments for them, some of which, of course, don't cost anything. You just have to point them in the right direction and get them in the right place. Wow, that's amazing. So w was it really your honeymoon to India that kind of changed and turned your mind around and decided to make Yes. Yes, I think it was because I was already cataloging Indian and Islamic art at Christie's in London at the time. So I grew my introduction to India was through these very romantic paintings oh, with okay. Krishna and Radha and, uh, you know, palaces and gorgeous colors, those gorgeous colors we all associate with India. And so when my husband said, where should we go? My husband to be, said, where should we go for our honeymoon? I said, why don't we go to India? And he said, fine, you plan it. I don't want to know anything about it. I just want to ride an elephant. Wow. And so I planned the whole thing helped by all my expert collectors at Christie's who were so generous. They gave me all their tips. And that's why we had such a great time. Then when we got there, of course, I was bowled over. And so was my husband, fortunately. And we've been back together many times. I mean, I may have been about 200 times. He's been a good 20 times, I should think. But now my job is giving those personal tips to my clients treating each one as the most important person who's ever gone to India. And my job is to enable them to experience the India they want because it's bigger and more varied than Europe. So I work with each person and my Quo Vadis agent in Delhi is far and away the best agent in, De in India. And it has a network or they have a network of local agents, wonderful experts, guides, all sorts of people and terrific drivers throughout India. So there's, I could say, nothing we cannot enable. Yeah, and I think that- I would lay myself on the line for that. <laughs> nothing I we cannot able. Wow. We have okay. certainly set up some pretty weird things in our time. I bet, I bet you have many, many stories to tell. And I know India is really one of those destinations. I, I, I've known people that have gone and they really say that you do need a guide there. It's not, it's not a simple place to get around. It can be a bit chaotic and it, it's not what you would experience in the Western part of, of the world, certainly. Yeah, I think this is completely true. If you land in, in Rome with a good guidebook, you can get on with it and you can then probably see four, get to four or five other cities in Italy and it's quite straightforward. Mm -hmm. If you land in India, it is in, you are going to get much more out of it if you have at least a skeleton laid out for yourself according to your interests. And I think if you have a guide for some days, it, it just really helps you get to places without wasting half the day getting there. And there's a limit to how interesting it is just getting from A to B. Yeah, 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 of course. That's, that's part of the fun. So huge country, there's, I, and tell me if my stats are wrong, 1.2 billion people cover yeah. 1.2 million square miles. So that's a lot yeah. of territory. And I'm yeah. sure, you know, one of the most frequent questions is, you know, how, where, where do I start? So I, yeah. I was doing a little bit of research before talking to you because I'm obviously not an expert in India. And, you know, I went to TripAdvisor, right? 
Uh, and TripAdvisor says, according to their uh, Traveler's Choice picks for this year, that the top five places in India to visit are Jaipur, New Delhi, Mumbai, Jaisal, Jaisalmer, and Bardez. Do you agree or disagree from a cultural standpoint? <laughs> well, from a cultural standpoint, um, I would say if you just went to those five places, it might be a little tiny bit limiting and you might not quite get an idea of the richness and the high quality and diversity of Indians, India's culture. But leaving that aside, you, you really can't go everywhere in one trip. Um, Jaisalmer and Jaipur are both in Rajasthan and that's one state which the Rajputs, um, uh, where the Rajputs lived in different dynasties and that really is the fairy tale forts, the fairy tale crazy palaces, the very bright colors because it's a desert area and more of a folk tradition. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted something high class, world class, breathtaking, then I would suggest that you might visit two sites only a 40 minute plane ride away from Mumbai and they are Ajanta and Ellora because they are fountainhead of Buddhist, of Jain, of Hindu carving mm. and temples, monumental stuff. Um, and then for coming into India for the first time, obviously you have to land somewhere. So you may land in Mumbai, which I think is a great entry city, I would agree, mm -hmm. uh, with, with TripAdvisor people. Mumbai is a great city. It's sort of Janus headed. It looks to the west, it looks to the east. It was uh, really built up and uh, flourished under the British as a great port. They called it Herbs Prima in India. And today it's the financial capital, the entertainment capital, the fashion capital, and it's fun. It's very safe, by the way, and that's an important consideration for people nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, I, as a woman, can walk around there on my own all the time. It has lots of boutiques. It has the unbelievable contemporary fashion in India. It has great history. It has great buildings, a fabulous museum. It has bars, lots of bars and cafes. And it's very buzzy. And it has uh, night, good nightlife too. Oh, wow. But New Delhi is really difficult, I think, as a city. I wow. think, although it's the capital of the great, uh, the largest, uh, democracy in the world. It is in fact about nine capitals, the ruins of them, successive capitals, splayed over a big plain. It is a nightmare to crisscross. Mm. It is very political with the dullness that comes from political cities. I mean, would you rather start with two weeks in Washington or two weeks in New York? Yeah. New York. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, once you get to grips with it, you can make you can use it for your own ends and you can enjoy the beautiful garden city at the middle new delhi and you can enjoy some of the remains and this and that but i tend to advise my clients to go to delhi last because by then they've got to grips with a lot of things about india they have an idea what they want to see and they can kind of deal with it and you need to be very geographical about it you need to decide what you want to see and that it's close to the next thing or makes it progression. I always just spend the whole day going left, right and center. But one thing it does have, which nobody goes on, no visitors go on much, is a terrific underground train station, train oh, system really? called the Metro. Yeah, it's really good. It's very fast, very reliable, clean as a whistle. Hmm. And everyone stands in line before they get on. It's amazing. <laughs> very civilized. We like to hear. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. Um, aside in, in Agra, that's where the Taj Mahal is, correct? Is correct. there anything other than the Taj Mahal to see in Agra? Is there other reasons to go to Agra? Yes, there sure are. Um, it really was the capital of the dynasty in northern India that most people have heard about, the Mughals, who were so legendary rich that our word mogul, as in a film mogul, ah, comes yeah. from that. These were the Mughals. And Agra was their capital from around the 1550s to 1648. And uh, they made it very glorious. So you have the Taj, which is one of the last buildings to mm -hmm. see. That's Shah Jahan's tomb for his wife. Mm -hmm. But you also have a really good fort, sort of boy's own fort, 
with you know double walls and all of that you have a beautiful exquisite tomb to uh shah jahan's mother um stepmother um nur jahan uh, sorry no no not to that to a relation of Shah Jahan, too complicated to explain. Yeah. But he was the prime minister. But it's small, it's exquisite. Many people prefer it to the Taj Mahal. Oh. It is encrusted with inlaid different colored stones all over. It's called the tomb of Itimad Uddawla. It's the other side of the river. So some very naughty guides will say, oh no, you can't get there, there's no time. But I would say that would be, apart from the Taj, your most important thing to visit. Oh. And very near it is a newly rediscovered garden called Metnabag, the garden, which we now know was part of the original design for the Taj. And if you go there at sunset, you see the sunset illuminating the Taj across the water, and it's absolutely ravishing. Oh, breathtaking. And then there are other things to see. So you have five or six really great things okay. to see. Good. So there is a good, good, good reason to go to. Iraq. Yeah, you go once, you see it all, and then you you don't go, don't have to go back. And mm -hmm. Agra town itself is not so great. So this isn't a place for wandering the bazaars much. Okay. Good. Good advice. So speaking of advice, first timers, some quick tips. What what should you think about if you've never been to India? This is the trip of a lifetime. What are some of the considerations you really have to think about before you go? Um, I think you have to think about the time of year you would like to go because oh. you can be comfortable in India at any time of year. So if you are obliged, I have some clients going there tomorrow. If you are obliged to go in May, it's pretty boiling hot oh. in the plains and down in the south, it's pretty sweaty hot and humid but you can go into the lower himalayas and have the most wonderful time so time of year is what the second thing is um if you are interested in buildings and history it makes a lot of sense to start by visiting the south and this is not the received wisdom of glossy magazines who are always telling you to go to very expensive hotels presumably their journalists are stayed in for free in the north but in fact if you start in the south from the place that used to be called Madras, it's now called Chennai, you can see the story of India very, very well and maybe spend 10 days going through a state called Tamil Nadu and then maybe see a little of this very um, lush state called Kerala. And then maybe you can go to the north and see the more famous fairy tale Rajasthan, like. Uh, Jaipur or Jasmine, but actually I much prefer two other cities in Rajasthan to that, much prefer. And they are Jodhpur and Udaipur. They are very well run at the moment. They've been very well managed, well restored, and they're a joy to be in. And you can walk through them very well. And there are good craftsmen there still and lovely places to stay. Simple old buildings that are cheap, more fancy contemporary and then drop dead gorgeous over the top super deluxe and that's another thing i would advise to people mix up where you stay stay in a bit of heritage bit of contemporary uh, you know a bit of the big bit of the small make it a, a, a variety of experiences like, like, uh, like. yeah and all the indian people are so kind yeah every single person wants you to have a wonderful time and that is you know, a great thing to experience. Oh, okay. It doesn't really matter that are 1.2 billion people because uh, on the whole, you bump into wonderful people all the time. It's an advantage. Uh, good, good, good. All right, I, I know there's so much to talk about, but I, I want, before we end, I want to know about some of the tours that you're going to be leading now through the summer into fall. What's what's happening with you? Uh -huh. Well, very, very exciting things. Um, <laughs> in December, I am going to be arranging a short trip for people to go to a place west of the well-known uh, Bangalore, the IT capital, but west of there is Baila Kupe, it's a Tibetan settlement, and there Dalai Lama is coming. His Holiness is coming to inaugurate a temple and give two sets of teachings. And that's really special, and I have managed to grab the really good hotel accommodation there 
and I'm going to be doing um, short, opening up shortly a short trip there, which will be really I, this is true once in a lifetime uh -huh. opportunity. And then in uh, January next year, I do a terrific trip through the south, which will include some of the big temple festivals, okay. which take place in the temples through the streets across the rivers. People all dressed up, marvelous. Good. And uh, in February, a trip through the north, the classic India, starting in Mumbai, going to Ajantra Nalora, which I mentioned, going into Rajasthan, to Udaipur, to Jodhpur, going to the Sufi music festival, which is sublime. And then, of course, seeing Jaipur, Agra, and Delhi. Okay, those are, those are probably long tours. Two, Two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Two okay, weeks. You're packing yeah. a lot in there. Okay. We pack a lot in. So the best website for people to look you up on to get more information, is that uh, louisenicholsonindia.com? It is. Okay. <laughs> Got it. louisenicholsonindia.com. Thank you so much. I really appreciated all your time. This is wonderful information. And I want to do a little follow-up blog that we can kind of pair with this video because there are so many different countries and destinations and, and little tips that you gave that people will probably need to read it to, to capture it because God knows they can't spell it. So thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be talking again with you soon, I hope. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.